Here we go. Okay. So what's up guys? All right. So this is the last Soren four and it was sort of an experiment for me to get back to what it would be like, um, having weekly meetings again, because I used to do weekly team meetings all the time. I always say this, but like, I can't, we used to do them at 9 PM. I don't know how we did it as working moms, but we did, uh, or working women even just to get up for work the next day. Cause we were so fired up after those calls. Um, but it's been really good sort of getting back to a couple of the nuts and bolts. And just as a review, we've gone over the importance of having a morning routine or at least setting your day with uh, intention. Uh, week two was all of the like the time hacks on getting your income producing activities done. Hey, Trish. Um, week three last week was um, my favorite. It was leveling up your leadership. That was by far my favorite of the calls that we've done. And to, I was going to do a whole thing on the launch and using launches for your business. But when I really started thinking about it, if I was to say like, what are four things that would help leverage your business? Launches are a great addition, but what's most important is expanding your network, right? So we talk about the importance of inviting. And I think a lot of coaches get really good at inviting, but if you're not changing who's watching your posts, you are not going to grow. So it's how do you get the right people to continually look at your post? And there's nobody better for marketing, in my opinion, than Shalene Johnson. So I did a Shalene Johnson training. It's going on right now. It was like $27. I couldn't believe it. It was like a five day thing. It's the worst time for me to add any additional anything. It's a very busy week. Uh, and I'm going into the season of a ton of birthdays, but I sat around, I'm like, I can make excuses every day, or I can just figure out a way to do it. And it's amazing. I'm listening to Shaleen when I'm doing my workouts. I'm listening to Shaleen when I'm blow drying my hair. I'm listening to Shaleen when I'm like folding three pieces of laundry. I'm listening to Shaleen in like, I have three minutes in the car right now to listen. And I'm just, it's amazing how many very small minutes you can find when you are on a mission to consume a lot of content. So I've consumed probably in the last day and a half, I've probably consumed maybe two and a half hours of Shalene. And I'm about to share with you everything that I've learned in two and a half hours, because I'm in this with you, you guys, I am not one of those coaches that has 50,000 followers on Instagram. I haven't capped out my Facebook, um, my Facebook uh, followers, because to be honest with you in the last six years, the only time I really started paying attention to expanding my network was probably the last year and a half. Um, I've had a really good, I had a really good warm market. I'm really good at asking for referrals. I'm really good connecting with people in person. So for me, that felt like I was expanding my market and it is, a, in a, essentially it is, but you also have to be expanding your market on social media. So I, I needed this just as much as you guys are probably saying like, I need this too. So um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, her slides are specific to Instagram, but I know that a lot of you are also Facebook and primarily my business for the first five years was all Facebook until about a year and a half ago. So maybe about four years into my business, I made the shift to try to also grow Instagram. Some of you don't even have Instagram accounts. Um, so it's, it's okay. Wherever you are, if you're starting from fresh, and you're basically about to birth a new Instagram account, or if you're resurrecting an account from the dead, which is what I've been doing for the last 18 months, um, I'm going to give you tips on both things. And this is coming straight from Shaleen, who focuses on running academies for teaching marketing strategies all the time. So she's amazing if you haven't listened to anything Shaleen does. Just on for some participation here with a show of hands, who is using Instagram more than Facebook? Raise your hand. Just Kathy. Okay. Who's equally? Okay. I mean, right. I post to Instagram, but I mostly have followers and do work work on Facebook. Okay. Does anybody not even have an Instagram account? Okay. Does anyone not post on Instagram at all? You have an account, but you don't use it. Me. <laughs> Jeannie. Okay. Jeannie and Trisha. Okay. Do you, do you guys ever take any of your Facebook posts and put it on Instagram? No, I don't know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. But to be All perfect, right. I try, I go on the app and I just like, I'm always like kind of lost. You okay. know, I, I don't know what I'm posting. And then sometimes I post things and I'm like, oh, I didn't even mean to do that. So like, okay. Okay. I feel so, like an old lady. That's okay. That's, I, I know sometimes I feel like that too. And my kids are like, mom, you should know how to do this. I'm like, I know, but I don't. But I will tell you like what, so everything I've learned social media up until the point when I started seeking out additional help, I learned on YouTube. Like all I did, I told my mom, I'm like, if you want to know anything, go to YouTube, use that as your search engine. So if you like, just need, if you, it's like using Instagram 101 YouTube, you will get so many videos that will at least teach you the nuts and bolts of it. If you feel like this call might be too high level, Jeannie, that's, that's okay. Because if you're just learning how to use Instagram, it probably will feel that way. Just like when you learn anything, it feels like your brain's going to explode at first, but that's why we stretch, stretch, grow, and then we can consume more. So let's just go ahead and get started um, because I think it's going to be applicable to both, um, both brands, but these uh, or both platforms, I should say, these slides are legit. They are Shaleen's. There's no reason for me to um, reinvent the wheel. So I basically took some, excuse me, really crappy screenshots today. And I didn't even ask Tracy T to do it. I put this PowerPoint together. So here's what we're going to talk about. And this is applicable to either uh, social media. You need to make sure that you have a niche. So when you niche it down to a very specific person that you're trying to go after, I know it feels scary to do that. Um, but that's one thing that I, I have been focusing on the last 18 months. And it's definitely helped narrow down the amount of people that I've been talking to that are like my people. I would much rather, sorry, this thing's weird. I would much rather um, speak to less people who are more my people than exert an insane amount of energy starting conversations with people that like come to find out they're really not my people. Okay. So for me, what started off is just being like, well, and I was telling the girls in the power hour this day, I'm like, I, I'm like a mom of four and I love fitness. And that was me the first two years. And I really had a tough time figuring out like what makes me special. And I don't say that as like, I didn't have self-confidence. I was just like, I don't know how to market myself. Like what makes me different than the next mom of four? I mean, Rebecca's on this call. She's got four kids. Like what's the difference between us? Well, there's a huge difference between us. Like she's married to an Italian. I am married to a Swedish person. You know, she lives in Virginia. I live in Connecticut. There's a bazillion differences and you have to start asking friends and family, what do they think of when they think of you? And when I started to do that, I realized that there were things like really good eye makeup. People think I do really good eye makeup or people think that um, they come to me for like faith-based questions or, you know, I just started finding like small things. People come to me about how I make my coffee, how I brew my coffee, how much coffee do I have? How do I run a business with four kids? They started asking me all these questions when I started experimenting with what I post about. And that has really helped me get down to what my niche is. Now I know that what I'm looking for is a woman. I don't work with men. I only want to work with a woman. It doesn't matter what phase of life she's in. It doesn't matter any demographic. None of that matters. I want somebody who has a passion for learning how to be a leader. Like, that's what I love. I love mindset conversation. I love leadership conversation. I do love faith-based conversation, but that, that is, that is part of what I love. It's not part of who I'm looking for, who I'm looking for and who falls into my lap is really out of my control. So, um, you've got to think about that. We're going to talk about that tonight. You've got to optimize your profile. And this is, I'm going to show you slides that are specific to Instagram, but I want you to also think about it with what your Facebook profile looks like and how to create a viral post. Okay. And we're going to try this, uh, tonight in Instagram or tomorrow, probably. So first and foremost, you guys, both of your accounts, this is like, this is like new coach 101, your accounts, Facebook and Instagram need to be public. They should not be private accounts. Okay. So to change the setting in your group, uh, in, in Instagram, you just go into your settings and you do the same thing with Facebook. I don't have an image for that. You can YouTube how to do it. Um, but Facebook has curator accounts and business accounts. There's a little bit of a difference between the two. I chose a business account. Okay. 
Um, if you are worried about what you're posting and it's uh, because you're posting your kids, don't post your kids anymore, right? Like it's a really simple answer. People are like, well, I post things and then, or start a brand new, start a brand new account. That's basically for your business only. But like, if I'm posting private things that I don't want people to see on my social media, I'm usually texting those to my family anyway. Um, so you are in a business and we go over this in, in the new coach workshop your storefront window is your social media. It has to be open. You have to be open for business. If you're not going to have a public account, then you don't really need to watch much more because you're going to have a very hard time expanding your network if you're not public. Okay, your profile picture. This goes for both Facebook and Instagram. Okay, and who loves Shaleen? She's so humble. Like she's like, she's talking and she's like the first one on the left. She's like, I really love that picture. It's a great picture. It's very clear. Um, but it's got a microphone in it and it's not as close up on her face. Your profile picture needs to be a close up of your face. And I could show you a couple of different examples. I actually didn't have one that I really loved. I, I've been playing around with my profile. I want you to take screenshots of your Facebook profile and your Instagram profile before you do anything uh, tonight, before you make any changes so that you can look and compare. Um, so I did change my profile picture. You can see it. It's a little bit closer of my face, but it's like the side of my face. That is not a perfect profile picture. I need a better picture that is like just of my face that does not get grainy um, when it is like, blown up. Okay. So that's something on my to-do list to do. Um, but your picture, your profile picture, it should be, um, I thought I had a slide on this, but I guess I don't. It should be really clear. It does not need to be a professional picture. It can be taken with your iPhone. Um, it should not be a picture of your body. It should not be a picture of you with your dog. It should not be a picture of you with your kids. You are selling sharing, promoting your lifestyle. So people need to be able to connect with you. One of the things that you've probably heard before, I hadn't heard this in a long time, but when I reheard it, I was like, ah, oh, that's right. People have seven seconds to decide if they are going to follow you or not. Seven seconds, which means they look at your picture, they read your profile, they scroll your feed, and they decide in seven seconds if they're going to follow you back. So if you are in a tag sale group in Facebook and you're trying to friend request people before they're accepting your friend request, those are the things that they're looking at. Same with Instagram. If somebody finds you via a hashtag or something like that, um, and we're going to talk about how to get your name out there and how to be found on Instagram, people are immediately going to go to your feed and they're going to start with your profile picture. So if I can't tell what you're doing, if it's too far away, if it's just your body shot, it needs to be a close up of your face. Um, your profile, I'm going through this fast because we have 24 slides to go through, um, but stop me if you uh, want to go over anything. So I really, really got a lot out of this. I thought I had a really good profile. I loved my profile. Leanne Champion, my life coach, helped me with it. I prayed over my profile. Like it was this funny conversation. She's like, have you prayed over your profile? I'm like, no, pray over my Instagram pr profile. Why would I talk to God about that? And it was this funny discussion that she and I had had about like how much for me to like be bathing my business in prayer. And so I really thought that this was my good profile. I hadn't changed it in about a year. I went through this training and I changed my profile all around um, because I thought that Shaleen had some really good points and I learned some things. So your username should contain your name. That is at the very top where it says Kenya Kelly up here. Your username should have your name, right? Um, it should, like for me, it's Faithfully Fit Tracy. It has my first name. So your first name or your last name is fine. Or if you're like Fit Mom Rebecca, that's fine. If you're like Dog Lover Karen, that's fine. But it should be, if there's other words outside of your name, it should be in alignment with what your mission is as a coach. So probably nobody here would have Dog Lover like Juliet. She would be a prime person. Can't do that. Um, your photo is the first impression. We've already gone over that. Your name, this is really interesting. So a lot of people just repeat their name right here on this line. This is actually a searchable uh, opportunity for you to be found. So you have this Kenya Kelly girl, and she's also a TikTok expert. So if you go into uh, Instagram and you search accounts 
for TikTok expert. It's going to not only look at um, hashtags, but it's going to look at this line, this name. So this name should be something that refers to the type of person that you're going for in your niche. Okay, so you can see I put fitness and leadership mentor. Okay, I've toyed around with that so many times and I probably will keep doing that. Um, but I am thinking about like the woman who's at home, she's either working at home or she's home with kids. Um, she's wanting more. <coughs> she wants to, um, she wants to learn more. God bless you. She wants to learn more about leadership. She's looking for a mentor. She wants a community. Like I'm thinking about who I'm trying to attract. What type of words would she be searching for if she was looking for something bigger and better? Okay. Now, Facebook is the same. I'm not going to toggle back and forth because we don't have the same, the, the, um, we don't have time to do that. But Facebook, if you go to your profile on Facebook, it also gives you a chance to list what your profile is. And I need to change mine. Okay. Four time elite means nothing to people. Four time elite means nothing to people. Um, an encourager, a coach, like it's, it's, Facebook also needs to reflect how I'm going to help and serve people in my profile. So when you get into like the category or Instagram makes you pick a category that, that really isn't important. I don't even remember what I picked as my category in Instagram. Um, but the bio is really important. And the bio and Instagram that I just redid that I'll share with you in a second, it needs to be changed in my Facebook as well, because my Facebook, that's actually a good picture. I should probably put that on Instagram, but my Facebook profile here tells anybody who wants to potentially follow me. It doesn't, it doesn't help them understand what they're going to get from me. Four time elite coach. What does that mean to them? Nothing, not valuable. So I need to change that. So let's get into that in a second. Your highlight buttons, your contact buttons, just forget about those for now. If you're getting started on Instagram, just don't even worry about having highlight buttons. That's like a 2.0 thing. Um, but you do want to have a link. And I know most people do not have a website. That could be your landing page for your Team Beachbody store. I use a link tree, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but I also am able to um, connect my link tree to my Facebook account, which I will probably do. Right now I have it linked to my mindset makeover and it's like not working. So I need to get that fixed. So I, that's, that's another goal that I've got to finish uh, this week is fixing my Facebook profile. All right. So we talked about this um, title being searchable branding and TikTok expert here. Um, most coaches, when I go to different coaches um, who have not done any sort of marketing training, they're right, like a health and fitness coach. There's so many health and fitness coaches. If it were up to me, I would tell you to find something else that helps people understand who you're looking to help. Okay. Um, this is what I want to spend some time on. Whoopsies. So this right here is your, uh, your, so your mission. Okay. So who and how you help. So this girl writes, helping entrepreneurs build and market profitable brands online. Then your next line should be your credibility. She was featured in Self Magazine. And then there's a call to action. Learn your brand personality. Probably says clink, click the link, which is also her call to action. And then her link is below for people to click on it and make it clickable. Um, so that they can actually go see what it is that she's trying to serve them with. Okay. So on mine, it says, and again, I'm not an expert, but it says, I encourage women, I gotta read this. I encourage women to believe in themselves so they can have a fit and abundant mindset. Okay, so that is my who I help. Okay, and you can always go to my Instagram and look at it. You can go to Shaleen's and look at hers. And then my call to action is relies on prayer. That's mine. It's very important to me that in my bio, it's specific that I'm faith-based. And so I could put like, I've helped 500 women. I can put, we have a team of 1000, but really what it comes down to it is, um, I believe that my business has grown because of my prayer life. So that to me is where my credibility comes from. Um, and then the call to action is tap below for the link in bio. And when people tap on the link right there, that's my link tree. 
it takes them, it gives them several different options. And this used to scare me when I would see other people do it. I was like, what is that link tree? It's so easy to set up, but the top, the top button takes them to the October new coach workshop. The second button takes them to, um, uh, my 5k, uh, challenge group in Facebook. It's linked to that. The third button is my mindset makeover, uh, Facebook group, which is my holding tank. And the last one is, um, I want to see what GoGo -Go juice is all about. And it takes them to a link to buy GoGo -Go juice. Cause I used to really highlight that. Um, and then one of them is just like, let's connect on Facebook. It takes them to my profile. Um, and this one is let's talk. I, I need help, but I'm not sure with what, and that just takes them to a Google doc that takes some information from them. Okay. So the bottom line is you might be someone who's new and you're like, wow, that all seems like a lot. And it's just baby steps, right? You just do one thing at a time. Like when we hang up tonight, just be like, write down who you're trying to attract. And then tomorrow morning, when you wake up fresh, write down who you're trying to help. Right. And then, and then maybe tomorrow afternoon, you're like, oh, I just thought of something cool for, you know, what my credibility source is. And use each other. I'll post this recording and you can put your profiles, snapshot them in the thread and we can all help you, right? It's not like you're on this mission and it has to be fixed tomorrow. My social media literally got better 1% at a time, day by day, right? It's not all of a sudden going to be like, oh, you make all these changes that you're going to learn tonight and all of a sudden you're going to go up 500 followers. You have to also be consistent with it. But the best cheat sheet that I thought, and you can screenshot this, is basically like your mission statement is, I help blank with blank, right? I help whoever my target market is with their problem. I encourage women to believe in themselves so they can have a fit and abundant mindset. Credibility, I, and then give your credibility, your call to action, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to click a link? Do you want them to email you? Do you want them to text you? Do you want them to go to a different website? Um, and then whatever your website link is going to be, okay? Um, and for those of you, I think that we're asking, um, you can just go to Linktree, you can see it here. It's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. If you just Google that, you can link, literally it's so easy. You're, you can link whatever you want to your Instagram and it's very easy to go to like your Facebook page and highlight the bar that's your home page, and that's how you get people to go to your page. You could just start off with something as simple as that. Um, okay, are there any questions so far before we uh, move on to the next thing? Anyone? A thought, a weather check, something? Oh my gosh, I'm a feedback girl. I got, are we, are we feeling overwhelmed? Are we feeling excited? I think this is great. It's stuff that I've been wanting to focus on. Um, so I'm starting to see some things that I can tweak. Cool. Thank you. I like, I like the linktree.com. That's a great one. Cool. And I always wondered how you did that. Cool. Okay. Like, not, but like people. Awesome. So Thank I have my link tree set up with the Google Doc. How do you get that information once they click on it and fill that out? Is that emailed to you? You can set Google Docs up a lot of different ways. I have mine emailed to me. I have a WooFu form as well, and it texts me when I get a form filled out. Um, and I don't get, for, like, please don't think I'm sitting here, like, going, reading through all these forms that people are filling out, right? So I mostly get people coming into my, um, my challenge groups or trying to get into my challenge groups where I'm like, who is this person? I don't know who this person is. No one that's running this challenge group knows who this person is. And I can go and look back and I'm like, oh, it's one of my new followers on Instagram. So I do find for me that linking my people to Facebook, getting them from Instagram into Facebook has been the, a very good transition, an easy transition for people. Okay. So um, I'm going to share with you guys what I learned today. And I'm checking to see it's, it's, if you go on Instagram, I did not post this on Facebook, but I'm about to teach you this. So I did this post on things good moms do. Okay. And it was basically like, you know, they forget stuff and 
they, um, they feel overwhelmed, right? And I just basically did a post about the fact that I pulled out of motherhood last week. And I talk about like how sometimes I feel guilty and shameful about that. But then I also am like, hey, so I, I, this, all these things happened to me. I'm like, hey, I wanted to just give some encouragement to anyone who forgot to send the box of Kleenex to school. Um, for the mom that arrived somewhere for getting your mask, if you hid in the bathroom for a few minutes for some space, or you just threw chicken nuggets on the stove because you just needed easy. So, whoa. Hi. 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 Okay, can you go talk to mom? Okay, go talk to dad, please, okay? Thank you. Um, and those are all things that I did as a mom. And so what, what happened is, and I'm going to teach you guys what I did for this post. It's gotten more shares and more saves than any post I've put up in the last six months. Okay. Because of what Shaleen taught me. All right. So that's what I'm going to share with you guys. And it's sort of mind blowing. Um, and I'm going to experiment with this and try it out probably um, every other day on my Instagram. And also I'm going to start cross using the content on Facebook. So before I go any further, I just want you guys to know that as it stands now, the algorithm is this. I type it into Facebook because you can't copy and paste anything into Facebook. I type my posts into Facebook and then I copy those Facebook posts and I paste them into Instagram, okay? Follow me, Tracy, you follow me? Okay, and the reason that- I mean, I copy and paste into Facebook all the time. So that's not considered an organic post in Facebook, and so it's not going to be shown to as many people as if you organically wrote it in Facebook. Because I'm having trouble with Facebook losing posts, so I've been typing them into my email and then pasting yeah. them. So that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. So you can't go and post on Instagram and then where it gives you the option to feed over to Facebook? Okay. No. So you're going you're gonna to lose that option when you go to a business account, Trish. If you're at a personal account, it's really easy. And you'd think that they'd make it easy for us because you can just post and we'll say share to, share to Facebook and it just pops up. So both Facebook, Facebook really wants organic posts, which means that you are I will give you this hack, Tracy. I will sometimes type up the post ahead of time and I might like paste 70% of the post and then I will retype like the last five sentences or something and then maybe add my emojis and I don't see a difference in my engagement when I do that. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah, um, Tracy, Zealot, I can relate because there have been times where like I'm going, I'm typing this whole thing on Facebook and then something happens and it disappears. It disappears. It I did it like five times for one post last week and it just got yeah. so frustrating that I just started typing them in an email, emailing it to myself and then copying and pasting it. You know how, what I end up doing is I'll type it into my iPhone notes and then once it's in there, and then you can even save it in there and then pull it when you want. So a lot of times like I'll drop like my thoughts and then like compose it and then pull it over. Yeah, so you can try it out, but I, I think when you pull it, save a few sentences to like organically type in and you might see a difference in the amount of engagement that you get. Okay, so I post, I, I post it in Facebook and then I copy it and I paste it in Instagram. I am sure that there are like, this is one thing where I, I just have to let this go. Like sometimes I put things in Instagram when I know it's not the best time to post. Um, and it's like, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to have time to do it. And then it's going to be like 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes you just have to do what you can. Right. I do try to hang out when I can, when I post, because if you're engaging with your people immediately when they go into your post for like the first 15 minutes, the algorithm is going to show your post to more people. But you guys like, and I know y'all are very busy as well. There are just some times where I'm like, that is just not possible. I just have to get my post up and I got to roll. So you just do what you can. Okay. Um, but what I want to show you, this is one thing that we, um, that we learned. So, so, 
All right, you guys know the viral post of the guy like with the cranberry juice on the skateboard and he's got like Fleetwood Mac. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Um, that post that went viral. Okay, well, if you, yeah. if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, it's this post of this guy on the skateboard and he's got like his jam box and his cranberry juice and he's skateboarding and it's epic. And all these people like tried to copy it. And so the idea is, is that you find a post that has already gone viral for somebody else and you re-share that post on your feed, okay? And this is like the crazy thing on how to, how to, how to, how to do it. So what, if you're in Instagram and you, um, you go into the little um, hourglass down at the very bottom, right? The little, the little, the little, whatever, you know, the, this thing, the circle with the line in it. Search button. And um, magnifying go, glass. <laughs> yeah, ma thank you, magnifying glass. And if you type in, what did I use? I think I typed in, I started thinking of like, what are some hashtags that my person might be using? Okay, I put like blogger, because I love to write. I put like, um, I put, I put faithfully fit just to see what would happen. Um, I put mom hacks. I put like fit, fit girl. I put girl boss. I put, um, I put like faith. I just, I just started plugging in all these different hashtags and it was when I plugged in mommy, mom and ain't easy, like slang mom and ain't easy. I, I got this this page right here of all these posts that have used that hashtag, okay? So if you look in this example, in this example, they're using the hashtag holistic health, all right? And when you go to Instagram, as you can see, there is the top posts and there are the, um, the recent posts, just like here on this second slide here. When you are looking holistic health right here as a hashtag, the top post and the recent post. You don't want the recent post, you want the top post because the top posts are the posts that Instagram is saying, hey, these people with these hashtags are doing well. Their posts are getting a lot of engagement, okay? So what I did to, to mom and ain't easy, okay? I go and I start looking, I'm scrolling through and I, excuse me, I have learned by looking at my own Instagram insights and also through Facebook by looking at the amount of comments and likes that I get on certain posts that when I post a quote that's either funny or like super true to the person I'm trying to attract, it like goes bananas. And I'm always saying to myself like, why don't I post more quotes? Because my quotes always do well when I find the right quote. So I'm going through this and I'm like, who? For the goal is to find a post that somebody who already follows you would want to share. So in my world, and I think I probably speak to a lot of you guys, like if I were to choose a post of like another chick, nobody's going to share another female from my page to someone else's page, right? So I am like, I got to look at all these quotes. And that's where I found the quote right there that I ended up posting. It's right here. Okay. So I clicked on that. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I've done like half of these things. This is my quote. So then what I do is I go click on the person that actually posted it, this woman right here. I click on her post, okay? And her name is Chastity. She has 17,000 followers. And now I need to find out if that post that Chastity posted is quote unquote viral for her right? What does that mean? Okay. She has 17,000 people. I can't see her insights. I can't see how many likes that she gets, but I started pulling up some of her quotes or some of her like posts, which a lot of them are quotes. Okay. And I started getting these and I'm like, okay, this one has 31 comments. This one has 30 comments. This one has 36 comments. This one has 20, this one has 12. And I went to the post that I liked and I'm like, oh, this one actually did really well. Like it's, it's, I can't see how many likes, but when I look at the rest of her posts, this one got 88 comments when I'm seeing mostly an average of 30 to 40. So for her page, 
a post with 88 comments opposed to like a post with 30, that's considered viral, even though it's not like viral, like the guy with the, with the cranberry juice. Okay. Is everyone following me on that? So I'm like, okay, that's, if that's a viral post for her, that's going to be a viral post for me. Okay. So what you do in order to share the post. Okay. So Shalene talks about like, she picked this one because Shalene did this experiment as well. So I give my permission to like slow down and to meet my needs and blah, 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 blah. So that's the one that Shalene picked. She went to this lady about the good life. She went to her profile page. She made sure that the post she picked was viral. If the post was a dud, don't use it. Okay. Um, here's what I did. I used this lady's post. Okay. And what you do in order to share it and don't let this scare you, it was super easy, is you go to the post. So I go to the post uh, at the ladies page that's got, you know, mom, momfully you, chastity. And here's her post right here. I'm going to click on these three buttons over here in the top right corner. And you can see right here on my slides, it's, it's the top horizontal three buttons. Okay. When you click that, you will automatically get the option to copy the link. So you tap it, tap, copy the link, okay? And then what you do is you have to get an app that's free and was easy. I picked this one. It's called Repost. It's the one with the two arrows. It took me two seconds. It was free. I opened it. It asked me a couple of questions. And when I went to go repost, it automatically pulled up what was on my clipboard. So there's the post right there. It automatically pulled it up. It's pretty self-explanatory. I didn't even need to YouTube this. I just played around with it for literally like four minutes. And it asked for permission to go to my Instagram and it automatically took me to my Instagram as in the parking lot at the school, dropping one of my kids off when I did this. And boom, it takes me right to my Instagram. And that's when I wrote my post right here. I outsourced motherhood last week in order to reconnect with my husband. Re-entry for me is always fast and furious, blah, 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 blah. At the bottom of the post, this is very important, I give the woman credit, okay? I don't take credit for her post. I'm sharing it. She's going to know. She's going to get an alert that I shared it. But I said, um, thank you, mom, bully you, for the sweet reminder of what good moms do. So I gave her the credit for the post. There's a chance she might reshare what I posted. If she reshares what I posted, like, hey, Faithfully Fit Tracy reposted this, check it out, you know, ch check out her spin on it. If she were to share it, which sometimes happens, 17,000 new eyeballs see my post, right? So when you are doing this, you're not going for likes and you're not going for comments. You're going for reach, you're going for shares, and you're going for saves. Okay. And this is a very important part. When I posted it and when you do the same thing, you have to include your own hashtags. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't do it. Well, I wrote them all out and I didn't do what Shalene told me to do. So I have my hashtags. They're saved. I keep them like Trish in my notes section. I have all of my hashtags categorized. So I have a coaching post, hashtags, food or cooking, uh, being a mom of four, boating, being outside. This is my faith-based hashtag. I must have forgotten to copy and paste it into my post. But I have all these hashtags that are specific for like faith-based stuff, which is what I would probably categorize this one as. Um, grace, uh, God is good praying mama, all things that represent me. Okay. So I didn't even do this all the way correctly, but when you do this, you're going to post up to 28 hashtags that are similar to your post. And that would be hashtags that the person you're looking to work with might use. Okay. And write them out and save them. All right. I have the same for like, um, cooking and food. I have like hashtag delicious hashtag uh, food picks, hashtag food lover, hashtag whole foods, hashtag healthy food share, hashtag eat the rainbow. Like you can Google finding hashtags. We could talk about hashtags all night and we're not going to do that. 
So um, you go find the post, right? You, well, first of all, yeah. There, there, there's, um, there's a limit on how many hashtags you can put on one Instagram post. Up to 28. Yep. Yeah. If you already said that, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Up to 28. Yeah. I've learned that the hard way. That's, that's annoying too. When your whole post gets like eliminated from that. Um, okay. So you pick a hashtag mom and is hard fit life. I hate to sweat whatever your hashtag is. Okay. Um, Navy girls who are, who get fit, whatever it's going to be, right? You pick your hashtag, you run it in Instagram, you, you search the top hashtags, you find one that resonates with you, you look and see if it's viral on the origin of where it was posted, you click the three horizontals, you copy the link, you go to repost, and you post it. Don't post it at 10 o'clock at night, don't post it at four in the morning. Mornings and evenings are typically the best time. And like I said, I did not put that post on Facebook, uh, but I probably will tomorrow morning, right? I'm just sort of playing around with things, okay? Um, any questions on that so far? Everybody excited to try that? Yeah. Yeah, Pam Pritchard, you look fired up. Okay, all right. So we are going to move on. Okay, another thing to experiment with. And I actually had my post all ready to go and lost time today. So I'm going to have to do it tomorrow, which again, you guys, as much as we try to plan our content, like the hour from like 6 to 8 p.m. is crazy. So I didn't do it. But um, carousel. So there's single pictures. There's single videos. There's reels, which we're not even going to talk about. I can't even talk about it. I've not even done a reel yet. Reels. Um, are what Instagram is looking for. If you, when you go to your search button, I guarantee if everyone clicks this micro, this um, magnifying glass, there it is. I've got a reel. Can you guys see this? I can't see me anymore. I've got a reel that pops up. Why can't I see myself? Can you guys? No. I have a reel that pops up. Whatever the biggest square is when you click the magnifying glass on Instagram. Whatever the biggest square is for you, that's what Instagram is wanting you to do. So I get reels all the time and I still haven't bit the bullet and done a reel. Um, but before reels came out, it was all IGTV, right? So it's whatever the biggest box is, is what Instagram wants to see you do and they will reward you for it. So I'm going to have to learn reels even though reels drive me a little crazy, but I'm going to have to learn it because I want to play around with Instagram and see what happens. They will reward you by showing your post to more people. If you play with the technology and the perp and the platforms that they give you. Um, okay. So we, we've got single pictures, we've got single videos, we've got reels, we've got carousels. Now carousels and IGTV, IGTV is sort of like YouTube. And carousel is basically like a slideshow. Okay. So I literally did my first carousel last week and I'm playing around with carousels because if you see, well, I can't see my screen anymore, but it, when you have a carousel, it, it shows you the dots to show you that there's more than one picture. And what's really interesting about, um, Instagram is the, the, the algorithm is working like this. If I put a post up and I have 10 people that usually engage in my posts, I put it up and Instagram immediately out of my 10 people that usually engage that are already following me are, they're going to show it to five. Okay. They're going to show it to half of your people. If those five people engage in my post on Instagram and the, the algorithm for Facebook is very similar. They engage within the first 15, 20 minutes and they, share it, they like it, they comment, or this is a big one that I didn't know about. They sit and sort of hover on my post, which means they're reading it. Facebook knows and Instagram knows how long people are sitting on your posts. So if they're just scrolling and they scroll right past you, no bueno. What carousels do on Instagram is if there's a couple of pictures to look at, like this carousel here, for people to have to sit here, and swipe and look, oh, it went away. You get my point. And swipe and look at the three pictures that I put on my carousel. Guess what? They're now hovering on my post. So even if they don't comment or share or like or any of that, because they're hovering, Instagram's gonna be like, oh, okay. So Tracy usually has 10 followers, 
we sent it out to five. Those five people hovered, commented, shared. Now we're going to send it to another 20 people that usually comment on Tracy's stuff. And if those 20 people hover, comment, share, then it's going to keep growing, right? And when your post does that, that's how you get more and more eyeballs on your posts. It's not about likes. Likes help a little bit, but what we really want to go for is content that is shareable because that's how Facebook is going to then, as you're using algor as you're using hashtags, the algorithm is going to put you in more people's feeds that don't follow you already, which takes me back to the very beginning where your profile needs to catch them in seven seconds. Does that make sense? I'm so sorry. Can you go back to how, how you, where is carousel? I've never even seen that word on Instagram. Hi, Cecilia. Okay. okay. It's like, first of all, who's talking? Um, so a carousel, <sighs> so when you go to add a post on, uh, on Instagram, it enables yeah. you to choose, and I'm trying to find it right now. It enables you to choose, see these three yeah. buttons here, okay? Yep. If I push the one that looks like there's a bunch of pages stacked on top of yeah. each other, yeah. then, bye Jeannie, um, then that would give me a carousel option. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I've never heard okay. that term before. Okay, 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 yep. okay, thank you. So yeah, no problem. So that gives you multiple pictures, all right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, and that gives somebody a chance to sit and hover over your yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So those are, these are the types of posts that you can do, right? So now you know what the, what the term is called. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but in 2017, the old aesthetic was like these branded coordinating tones. You probably have seen them like every, there was a grid, like every two or three posts was like a beautiful quote. It was all color coordinated. It was very, very hard for people to stick with that. And what's really cool is that now the aesthetic is totally changed and it's not about you. Your post should be, how am I serving others? How am I serving others? Is my content shareable? Does my content motivate? Does my content help people? Is it organic? Are the images clear? Is it predictable, right? Um, and so it's a really good opportunity for you to somewhat look through your feed, and this applies to Facebook as well, to be like, like you can see, and this is driving me nuts in this, like if I'm, here we go. If you, if you look at mine, like there's nothing aesthetic about this. It's like all over the place. The quotes are all over the place. But if I go through my posts, I'm like, okay, what posts are serving people and what are not? That's the next thing I need to do. All right. Guys, if you're doing a workout post and we've all done this before and it's you all sweaty and you've got your water bottle or you've got your shake and you're like flexing your muscles and you're like, okay, I got my workout in today. That's not really a shareable post. What can people share about that? It might motivate them and inspire them and they might like it, but you want to be able to come up with something that is shareable, like that's going to help people. So maybe you're like, hey, I like Trish, maybe you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm modifying moves that I've never been able to do before. And let me show you how I'm modifying, you know, and you could go, you could take a picture of yourself in a plank position. And then the next picture right next to it could you be, you know, could be you on your knees with like those things that you hold. And it's like, I get just as much of a workout. And so that's a shareable post because somebody who might have an autoimmune or inflammation in their body like me, I might be like, oh my gosh, that's a great example on how somebody could modify a move that typically hurts people who have inflammation in their body. Like you get my point, right? Where it's like your dog on the couch, even though like to you, your dog is really cute. Your dog on the couch is not beneficial to me. I don't even like dogs. I have a dog, but like, I don't like a ton of dogs. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I would never share a post about a dog. That's not valuable to me. But if you're going to show me like how you organize your dog food, so that like it's easy to get to and how it looks neat in your pantry, I would probably share that. You guys get it? Like you want to be thinking about how are my posts helping people? Those are the posts that are going to get the shares that you're looking for. Okay.
So I put up a how, how I make lotion post and all of a sudden I got people having a ton of conversations back and forth about it. And I didn't have to do anything. It was fascinating. So yes, Cecilia, that, is, that is such a good example, right? Because you're offering something. So is this a message or an image others would want to share? Does this image grab people's attention? What is the value of this post in, uh, you know, to others? Is the post generally consistent with my message? Like, Cecilia, when I think about you, and I don't even know you that well yet, but like you're clean, you're vegan. I think about like, you probably are into products that are like good for your body, good for the environment. Like that's already what I think about because you're already branding yourself that way without me really spending a lot of time with you. I know that about you. So like how to make your own lotion is a perfect post for you. And I can talk to you offline about how to keep repurposing that. So you're not having to like recreate the wheel. You can use that post again in three to six months for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, is this content bright and light? Does it benefit my target off, off audience? Does it serve others? Does it align with the promise in my bio? So remember, who are you trying to help and what can you offer them? Um, okay. So as you guys start to um, look at your Instagram, Okay. And the algorithm on Facebook isn't as good to show you, but I'm just going to show you here because I think it's easiest. When you're on your own page, there's a little box right here that says insights. You click that box. Okay. And when you click, when you click the insight box, it automatically will take you to like your overview, right? So how many accounts you've reached, what the interactions have been and what your total followers are. Okay. If you scroll to your followers and you click on the total followers number, it's pretty amazing because it looks like this. So you go profile insights, total followers, and then you scroll down and it will show you how many follows and unfollows you've gotten that week. It'll show you the age range of women and men that follow you. And it will, this is the most important thing. It shows you what and when they're on Instagram, right? So you see this right here. It's showing me that my people, yeah, good, Tracy. My people are on Instagram, um, actually like not really when I post. <laughs> I usually post at nine and that's not the best time. I should be posting around 6 p.m is when I should probably like when other women are sitting in parking lots waiting for kids to come out of places. So you play around with it and then <clears throat> you can move the day of the week. Like that's Tuesday, but I can go look at Mondays. I, you know, I can see which of my days change and you can play around with your posts. So that's really important for you to be looking at your insights. And if you're not looking at your insights in Instagram, you should, because a lot of times that that's going to mirror Facebook. You're going to notice that a lot of people, if you're attracting a certain type of person on Instagram, that's probably who you're attracting on Facebook. And it will be interesting for you to figure out like how to uh, post when you're going to get the most eyeballs. You guys might be wondering like how often you should be posting. So your growth, if you're in growth mode, I would say every single one of us on this call would be in growth mode. It's six posts a week. Take Sundays off if you want. Take Saturday and Sunday off if you want and do a double post one day. Play around with it, okay? If you're in maintenance mode, three to five posts a week. If you're like not really looking to grow, three or less. And that goes for Facebook and it goes for Instagram. And the reason is in order for other people to find you, they you have to be posting. You have to be posting so that Instagram is going to show your posts to people that don't follow you and you have to be posting in Facebook in order for it to be like Tracy Baldrack just commented on Pam Pritchard's posts like you know how you get those and that would show up in like Tracy Zealot's feed in order for that to happen Pam's got to be posting if you're not posting you're not growing right so Facebook does give you that whole, like, you know, there's a post from a week ago and I can go start to re-comment on some of those and it might give it a little bit of a boost, but you've got to be posting if you want to be growing and that goes for either. Okay. Um, we're almost done here. So, um, caption length, this is a big one. So 
if you are like going live in Facebook and you're going to go live for like five minutes, your caption should be probably smaller, right? So my content is a live five minute video. My caption should be small. If my post in Facebook is a picture, then it gives me the opportunity to play around with a larger caption. Okay. So, um, I tried it. I, 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 I don't think that writing long posts is a bad thing, especially if you're a good writer, if you have a passion for writing. Um, but just remember that not everybody that you are trying to attract is going to read a super long post. So you have to sort of play around with the caption sizes. So sometimes go big, sometimes go small, play around with it. Um, but I think that you'll figure out what the perfect niches like for me like a three paragraph post it's it's like i can get people to read it when i go a little bit longer with that i don't get as much engagement on those posts that's just who i attract um remember this is like we've gone over this before as a team but you want to be writing posts that are telling stories um what i do is i write my post out and then after my post is written i'm like what's the most exciting thing about this post what's the most exciting line and then sometimes i'll take like the third paragraph and make it go to the first and sort of rewrite it a little bit because i have to hook my reader in the very beginning of of, of the post um, the last post i put last october through december i packed on 20 pounds and i still haven't lost it yet people are going to keep reading that because they're like oh my gosh i don't want that to happen to me people are going to keep reading that so i hook people in and i create curiosity and then um, when somebody is sharing the content that I provide or sharing a recipe or sharing a lotion, I know that that's a good post and that's going to be how I'm gonna get more eyeballs on my posts, okay? Um, I, you always wanna end your posts with a call to action so people know what to do. It's like sometimes I'll get a weird text message, like I've got a text message from one of my daughter's friends, at, at the parent, and I'm like, I don't, does she want me to reply to this? I don't, there's no question. What is she, what is she doing? Um, your call to actions can look like this. Comment below, share this post, tag five friends, click the link in my bio, go to my stories for more details, tell a friend, save this post, like this post, drop an apple emoji if you like to pick apples, introduce yourself in my DMs, like whatever tell me blank, right? You want to tell your people what to do. Be the leader that's directing people on how to respond um, and engage with you. Okay, Whew, that's it. So here's our takeaways. Here's your call to actions, okay? So one, find or create a shareable post and post it on Instagram with the CTA, all right? So if you're not big into Instagram or if you haven't posted Instagram, this can be like your first post. All right. Um, I actually went to Shaleen's page and I'm like, what, let me see some good quotes. I went to Jasmine Starr's page. I'm like, let me look for some good quotes. I went to this girl who like specializes in Enneagram. I went and I'm like, let me get some good quotes. And I'm just saving. I have an album in my phone and I'm just screenshotting them. I'm like, these would all be great posts so that when it's two nights from now and I want to do this again, I'm gonna go right to those and be like, oh yeah, I wanna post that one tonight and then I can go right to the person's account in, uh, in Instagram, copy it, post it, and this time I'm not gonna forget my hashtags. So get your hashtags ready that you wanna use after you find your post and go through the steps that uh, we reviewed tonight. Um, and then when the recording of this call goes up, I want you guys to screenshot it so we can all go and like, like we can like it, but we can also share it to our stories for each other. We can save it. We can do all the things that are going to help your algorithm. Okay. Number two, I want you to go through your own Instagram and Facebook feed, and I want you to archive posts that don't serve your audience. Okay. So what does that mean? All right. If I were to go through my Instagram, it's like, all right, if and i know we've all done this before like if you posted a picture because you've got your makeup on and your hair looks good or you like your workout outfit and you post it because you're like oh man i look good i gotta get a picture we've all done that before but if it doesn't have a message that's serving people it probably doesn't need to be on your feed right so i'm not going to take the time and read through all these posts right now that i have but like i don't know i don't know like oh this is a live video that probably serves a purpose, but like, 
if I'm in, if I'm, if I am in business to serve women and I put a post up about, you know, just how cute my dog is, I probably can archive that. Right. So you guys are getting my point. Um, okay. Optimize your profile. So go through both of your profiles, um, Facebook and Instagram, do the things that we talked about. Um, and, um, do the same in your Facebook posts on like what hasn't been serving my people, right? If it's, if it's a recipe that doesn't really is not healthy and it's like for brownies and you're a health and fitness coach, take it off. Unless it's like brownies using like chickpeas or something like that, right? So you want to kind of play around with it and mix it up a little bit and just get started now on having more of an awareness on how your social media is attracting new people because what you're doing now and the work that you're putting into your social media today is actually what's going to attract you people January, March, and July of next year, right? So as a business person, you want to constantly be growing in that area. Um, I know I certainly feel like I am and it's constantly seeking out new information and how you can change your storefront so that you keep finding women or men that are your ideal customers. Make sense? Okay, that is all I've got and I only went four minutes over. So I will save the recording, but I would just love feedback after I put the recording up to hear what's working for you, what questions you have, where you're stuck, so we can kind of chat through it together. Good, oh my goodness, you guys are either Sounds a good. tired <laughs> bunch or a quiet bunch. All right, okay. Excited. Thank you so much. I had no idea how to do tonight, thank you. Cool. Okay, good. I'm glad that it was worth your time. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. I know Katie, you're picking up kids. Thanks for multitasking. Thank you guys for your hour of time. And I will see Thank you guys you. later. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.